It was only a year ago that Bamboo Lab introduced their first 3D printer, the X1C, and they completely upended the 3D printer market. They changed the game with a printer that was fast, that produced high quality prints, and that didn't require constant tweaking and fiddling to get good results. And they left their traditional 3D printing company scrambling to catch up as their customers bought the X1C and even more of their customers bought the more affordable P1P. You can find dozens of videos about Bamboo Labs printers, including my video review of the P1P, which you can get by clicking here and will be in the description. The 3D printing market is starting to catch up with Bamboo Lab. Creality released their high-speed K1 printer and then Prusa shocked everyone with their surprise MK4. But the most important printer to come along and challenge Bamboo Lab is one that surprised me. It's not a thousand dollar multi-filament monster. Instead, it only costs $259. It prints nearly as fast as the Bamboo Lab P1P, and the prints it makes are incredibly good. The printer I'm talking about is this one, the Elegoon Neptune 4, and I'm going to give you my first impressions of using it, why I think that this marks another turning point in the 3D printer market, and how I'm sure that something new will come out from Bamboo Lab by the end of the year. I had just posted my review of the Elegoon Neptune 3 Pro, also in the description below, and declared it the best entry-level printer. That same day, Elegoo went ahead and announced the Neptune 4 series of printers. I absolutely love the Elegoo 3 Pro for a new 3D printer because while it's slow, it's bulletproof. I routinely set prints started on overnight and I come back in the morning and it's just chugging along, making a perfect print. I have never had a print failure on the Neptune 3 Pro that wasn't my fault due to something like not cleaning the bed or selecting the wrong filament temperatures in the slicer. But the speed, it is so slow. Sitting next to my P1P, it feels like dial-up internet service versus high-speed internet. For those of you that were born after dial-up internet, imagine trying to send some Somebody an email and it's actually faster just to walk to their house and talk to them. The Neptune 4 and Neptune 4 Pro look virtually identical to the Neptune 3 and 3 Pro and they have almost all of the same parts. Yet the Neptune 4 series is about five times faster than the 3 series sibling. How is that even possible? On most printers, these physical components have been fast enough for high speed printing for years. What's been holding them back is the speed of the processor in the printer and also the operating system, which we call the firmware that they're running. It's a lot cheaper to make a printer with an older processor and with an older processor, you can't run the newer firmware. Thanks to Bamboo Lab and other market pressures, companies are finally putting faster processors in their printer. This allows printers like the Neptune 4 to run Clipper, which is a modern operating system for modern 3D printers. Elgo is shipping the Neptune 4 line with Clipper installed and ready to go out of the box. The Neptune 4 is a dual gear direct drive extruder with a nozzle temperature max of 300 degrees. That means it can print things like ABS and TPU and nylon. It also has auto leveling with 121 point sampling, which virtually eliminates having to manually level the printer, although I did do that on the very first time I took it out of the box. The Neptune 4 and the Neptune 4 Pro have some nice add-ons included with them, like a large part cooling fan, an LED light in the gantry, and also a nozzle LED light, which makes it really easy to check the first layer of your printer, even if the print head is blocking the main lights. It took me about 30 minutes to go from box to printing, which is about twice the time it took to get the Bamboo P1P going. The printer is network ready with an ethernet jack in the back. Clipper is designed to run from a simple web interface. So as soon as you connect your printer to a network cable or use an ethernet to Wi-Fi adapter, you can control the printer from your browser anywhere. You can even connect slicers like Cura to your printer and have it automatically print after slicing. Hold that thought. My very first test of the Neptune 4 was with the Elegoo provided test print, which is this adorable Buddha. It's not as good as a practical test as a Benchy, since the Benchy tests overhangs and not just print speed. But it's a file I could easily slice across the other printers in the test studio. I used the G-code that Elgu provided for the Neptune 4, and I sliced the same file for the Ender 3 Max Neo using Clipper and printed with a Sonic Pad. I used the Bamboo P1P with the standard print speed, and the Neptune 3 Pro using its fastest standard setting. The Neptune 4 actually finished faster than the P1P, due mainly though to the pre-flight checks that the P1P does when you start a print. If you've used one of the Bamboo Lab printers, you'll have noticed that the print time lists both the prep time and the print time for output. That's because the P1P makes sure everything is level and ready to go when you hit print, and that takes a few minutes. The P1P finished one minute slower than the Neptune 4, the Ender 3 Max Neo finished three minutes slower than that, and the Neptune 3 finished eight minutes later. Print quality on the Neptune 4 is great. Here's a Scout Trooper mask faceplate. This is made by Galactic Armory. They're fantastic design. There's a good amount of layer lines on this, but this was printed at the fastest possible speed. I use Cura as my slicer thanks to the wide array of plugins that are available for it, and Elgo has their own version of Cura that they provide on the thumb drive that comes with the printer. They also have it on their website, but right now I can't get the website version to actually open. It gives me an error in macOS, so use the one that comes on the thumb drive. This version of Cura has the Neptune 4 and the Neptune 4 presets as an option when adding a printer. Unfortunately, the Elgo version of Cura is based on Cura 4.8, and Cura is now up to 5.4. 
The newer version of Cura doesn't yet have the profiles for the Neptune 4 series in it, so it's not possible to quickly set Cura up to do the Neptune 4. I tried to create a custom printer and copy over the settings just like I do when printing to the Sonic Pad, but the slicing has given me problems so far. I'm sticking with the Elgu version of Cura for now, although it doesn't do organic support, so it can take more filament than necessary for a print, and I'm missing a lot of features that are found in 5.4. There are two types of filament printers. One is called Core XY, and the print head does all of the movement on the X and Y axis, and the build plate only moves up and down. The other type of printer is the traditional kind, which is often called a bed slinger. These printers move the bed forward and back, and the print head moves side to side as well. The Neptune 4 is a bed slinger, and one of the things I learned is that when a super fast bed slinger starts to make a bad print, it shoots filament everywhere. I mean, everywhere. I started a print and I came back an hour later and there was filament on the floor, there was pieces six feet away from the printer, there was a spiral of spaghetti all over the machine. This isn't going to happen often, but at some point you're going to be cleaning filament out of the corners of your workspace. This isn't as likely to happen on a Core XY printer because the bed isn't moving back and forth to shoot the filament across the room. I was really surprised to see how fast the Neptune 4 is compared to the P1P, and I think that the speed partially explains why Bamboo just dropped the price of the P1P by $100. Not only did the company drop the price on this printer, to celebrate their one-year anniversary, the CEO wrote a great letter in which he mentions that the company is not even close to scratching the surface of the kind of technology they want to bring to people. I think there's going to be a lot more coming from Bamboo Lab by the end of the year, and I think it's going to leave some of these companies scrambling. But the good thing is I expect to see a lot of innovation over the next year in 3D printing. I'll have a full review of the Neptune 4 after I've used it longer, but after a few weeks in, I'm already pretty confident it's going to become my go-to printer recommendation for the new print enthusiast, the hobbyist, or even someone with a print farm who wants to get the best return on investment possible. What do you want to see me test on the Elegant Neptune 4 printer? Put that in the comments below if there's anything you want me to try out specifically, or if there's anything you want to know more about, ask me below and I will put it in the next video. If you'd like to see my review of the Elegant Neptune 3 printer, you can find that here. If you'd like to subscribe to the channel, please do and do that over here. And as always, for Dave Tries This, I'm David Schloss. Thanks so much for giving this a try.